Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be evolving another one of your guys' solar systems from birth to death. This system here is from the user Phoenix, they suggested um, I do this one for one of these birth to death videos. Uh, this system was featured all the way back in episode 303 of the series now, so it's quite a while ago since we featured this um, on the channel. It's called the Algo system. It's got quite a decent lineup of objects as we can see here, I believe there is a few... Uh, large objects in here let's just have a look at the mass uh here so this one the dominant gas giant is 1.26 jupiter so they've got a fairly and that's a lot bigger than the second one so it's a fair uh, fair different range of sizes here there's one object really far away i'll love to see if that can hold on uh, but yeah there we are so we've got yeah a pretty decent decent lineup that's it there juven isn't it that's the dominant okay cool so obviously the system's already created in, in this scenario so all we need to do is evolve the system so we need to immediately just speed up the time. And uh, let's see how the orbits hold out. I mean, this is like this, uh, these videos are kind of a test to see. Now we're doing it for uh, your guys' systems as well. It's kind of a test to, to see how stable your guys' systems are once we really speed them up and put them to the uh, put them to the uh, the grinder, really, and see how, uh, see how it does. So we're going to speed up time. I could already see some bouncing moves. Let's go full speed ahead here and watch this system as it starts to evolve. So there we go. Oh, I can really see a wobble. There is definitely something in there. That's uh, not too uh, not too happy to be sped up in time. So I'm going at the fastest I can possibly go. Um, delete particles if there is any. I think I got rid of them. Um, right. Let's see how this goes. Oh, there's been a breakaway. What is that? Oh, immediately there's been carnage. We've already lost objects. I wonder where they came from. It's something from the inner solar system broke away. Look, there's a moon orbiting in a comet-like orbit. It looks like a, let a set of moons just completely exploded. Or was it Juvin? There's something, something's happened here. Look, one of those orbits hasn't really gone too great there. Okay, not good. We're already seeing some carnage. Stuff is, is a huge ejection. Look at that. Some massive load of stuff's been slung out already. Um, going to the inner solar system itself, I want to check the actual planets here temperature-wise. The hottest one's only 220. Second one, 165. Well, this one's at 1,000 already, so that one's already crazy. The Earth-like world is there, the blue one, at 11.6. 2.25 at this one. So there's a few there's a few decent worlds in here. This one's at four. So there's three worlds there of a decent decent conditions. So that one's really hot. Um, okay. But I think as soon as we start to evolve the star, which are we gonna do now? I don't think those earth like worlds are gonna be around much longer. So <laughs> let's go ahead and yeah, just get it at a decent pace. Let's just let's slow things down a bit. Right, so Luminosity, we're gonna put it up to 1.5. I'm gonna go big jump there. I'm gonna make the radius a tad bigger as well. There you go. Right, so now, let's continue evolving again. We'll go back to those rocky planets in a minute. I want to continue seeing how the orbits behave. We'll get rid of the ejected objects as well. Look at that. Completely gone. Huge, huge ejection straight away. I wonder what actually happened there. There's, look at there's more stuff just being slung out. Look at this. Seems there's been a... Something's not gone quite right, has there? Oh, where are we, where are we going here? Well, it's just stuff flying everywhere. This system has been destroyed. Oh, my gosh. I wonder what actually caused that. We didn't really actually catch where those objects actually came from. I believe, yeah, they're all moons and stuff, but yeah, huge, huge loss of objects there. Really struggling to select these. There we go. Get rid of all the ones in the far corner. I really hate how the game does that. See, why does it do that? I'm just clicking the object. Don't do that. <laughs> right, um, let's get rid of you as well. Okay, actually, let me delete it. That's huge, huge. Look, I mean, there's what's it like? Twenty odd objects have been tossed out immediately. That's a huge loss. Oh my gosh. Maybe it'd be easy just to uh, let's just let's just continue playing for now. But yeah, you can see just a huge. There's definitely been there's the dominant gash. I think all the moon systems have gone bust. Pretty much every single one has. I think, don't think any of the moon systems in here may have been stable. I mean, judging by this, I think yeah, the planet orbits are all still there. So I believe yeah, these are all moons. And they have been absolutely slammed. Just absolutely obliterated. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a huge, huge kill for everything there. See, look, I can't even, can barely select that. Look how many times I have to click it to hear it. Right, that's all of the objects cleared for now. Let's see, it's all cleared. I'm, I, I mean, yeah, they've, they've got to be moons, most of those, because it was a huge loss of stuff. You can see in the inner solar system, there's all these trails now. Yeah, I reckon these are moons. I don't think any of the moon systems were stable. They all were destroyed very quickly by the looks. We've only simulated for not even 500 years yet. And that has uh, obliterated all the moon systems. So in theory, our systems should run better now because we've got less objects in here to load. There's still a lot of uh, stuff flying around there, all these particles, all the little ones. 
So we'll have to see how they uh, hold up over time. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and check in on our uh, inner planets here. It's precisely the ones that were already quite, or the Hathable ones. You can see this one here isn't out 47. The Earthlight one, that's a 70. That's a huge spike there. This one's gone to 43 as well. So yeah, massive increase in temperatures already. We're going to keep ramping it up though. We're going to double the size of the star now. We're going to double the luminosity up as we are getting older and the star is getting more powerful. Let's continue evolving. Really get the speed going here. Let's see those orbits. Again, let's put the system to its limit, so the test and see how stable everything actually is in there. I don't think the gas chance are going to have too much. I think the planet orbits themselves, I reckon they're pretty stable. Judging by the mass of them, there's not any object that's hugely sized in mass. I think everything there is pretty, pretty calm. It's all of the moons and stuff that went berserk. But the actual planet orbits themselves look pretty stable. You can see they're not even wobbling. We're on, we're on orbit mode. Everything in there seems to be in pretty much perfect work and order. So we may have to, maybe maybe we will need an interstellar traveller just to spice things up a bit in this one. We will have to wait and see there. For the meantime though, again, let's continue to check in. Let's go on the start. Let's also buff luminosity to six suns now and watch as the uh, temperature starts to get further out. That luminosity zone, star temperature is increasing as well as we are getting older here. There we go. Let's uh, really slow things down as well. Let's again, let's check in on the inner planets here. 338 there now. Whoa, whoa, that was the blue one at one point. 986 there. This one's at 160. 173. So they're all there. All the clouds. It's all the atmospheres and them all thickened up. You can't even see the surface on those guys anymore. So they've been completely ruined by the stars ever growing of evolution. Again, we're going to continue buffing this up. Get that luminosity zone really spreading out here. As we uh, see the chaos unfold. So there you go. How far away is actually the first object here, which is this one? That one's currently sitting at 422 AU. Yeah, that's pretty bright. Okay. Again, yeah, system stability. Look, there's not any wobbling orbits at all. Even the, even the ones in the comet-like orbits, I mean, they're fairly straightforward. There's one that may have moved a little bit. This one here, that moon there. I think that was the moon, yeah. That one's a little more wobbly, but I go then. Everything's still running pretty spectacularly well, actually. So, looking good there. Very, very nice indeed. Good stuff. Okay, right. We need to spice this up a bit. I've, the, the system is pretty stable at this point now. So we're going to have an interstellar traveller. I'm thinking a good old brown dwarf is going to fly by. They're always pretty ones that can uh, spice up some stuff. I want to go with this one here. One of the large brown dwarfs. One of the exoplanets here. S or SDSS J01 448 Point four six plus one five three five zero one point eight. We're going to shoot this guy in here. One of the large brown dwarfs objects that's in our size comparison video. So we're going to sling it in. We're going to shoot it fairly central to the inner solar system. I'm going to plop it there. There it is. So we've got a rogue interstellar traveller coming into the system now. Maybe to bring some attention. Maybe it won't. We will see. So let's see how the rogue brown dwarf interrupts the system's orbits, if at all. Maybe it will fly by, and the system will be spared. Let's see. So Brown Dwarf's approaching. The speed will increase as it gets closer. It's cooled down actually. No, it's not even it's lost its temperature. <laughs> so let's watch it. It's got three Jupiter masses, so it's not the largest thing out there. Let's see if it creates any turmoil when it flies by. Because it looks like it's gonna it's gonna go on a very may even crash into the star, actually. That could make things interesting. I think if that is the case, I will quickly throw a save in just in case there is any carnage. So there we go. Let's save that. Cool. We'll always save before you add interstellar travellers in this. Because it looks like it may sling by the star very, very quickly. So let's have a look. Again, let's continue to speed. Maybe that maybe that interrupts the star. As long as it doesn't know over it, maybe that will create some turmoil with the orbit. So let's have a look. So here we go. It's coming in. Let's see now if it does create any issues. So it's coming in. I'm slowing down the time as quick as I can. It slings round. Okay, there you go. So it's slung out. It got ejected, bounced off. Gravitational slingshot. It looks like, though, it didn't create really any issues. It looks like it may have just gone in and come out again. Ooh, or is it? Or is it going to return? Have we picked up a new object in the system? I don't know. No, I don't think that's going to come back, is it? Interesting. Again, though, the orbits still seem pretty good, though. It's not really... Not really caused much damage. It's just came in and come out pretty cleanly. Maybe it didn't have enough mass to really, really do anything. Where is it though? Is it actually, is it going to return or is it? 
It is slowing down. Maybe it will return. Maybe we've picked up an extra passenger in this system. We will see. Okay, let's go at maximum speed, as quick as we can run. There we are. I think there's a still there's still quite a lot of moons flying around of some of these planets. That is definitely slowing down our simulation speed, I reckon, because we can't run this thing very fast. So let's uh, see. I'm fine. I kind of want to see if that round off may return. I don't know. It, 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 it's, is it lost velocity? That was interesting. Look, it's slowing down. Look. That's very bizarre. Look. So if it stops, is it going to go the other way? Is it going to come back then? Oh, it looks like it may. I don't know. Maximum simulation. So it can't go any quicker. There you go. But again, look, look how stable it is. It's just nothing's going on. It's crazy how well this one is running. Okay, the Brown Wolf is now sped up again. So what is it doing? Is it coming back or is it going away? I mean, what's the deal? There's no orbit registered for it. Is it actually turned? It is turned. It's coming back. It's coming for another round. <laughs> oh my god, interesting. Okay. So we're coming for round two. It actually held on. It lost its speed. So that could be that could be fundamentally interesting. I mean, it is going to sling very close to the star. Again, judging by the uh, predicted trail of it. It's the orbit. So it doesn't have an orbit. So it's literally just a still just a bypasser here okay but in the meantime star evolution will continue because that round off is taking ages so let's uh ramp up the star's power once more slow down time very fast here oh there you go so star again we're going to double up we're going to go 24 and we're going to go up to eight suns now we're getting bigger and if the star gets bigger that round off could just smash straight into it so we will see what unfolds let's continue Rapid evolution. There you go. How, how hot are we doing here? So, dominant gas giant looks like it may still is starting to receive a bit of temperature. It did cool down a bit there. Okay. I think this one here has got moons around it, hasn't it? So, this one's moon system is running pretty in pretty good order. You see, some of the moons have gone pretty chaotic, though, but it seems to be uh, holding on. But yeah, stuff like this is what slows down the simulation speed. That's why in my systems, for instance, I don't add moons. Apart from that one moon special we did, the reason I don't add moons is because it does slow down your simulation speeds. So it does make it longer for us to wait, for instance, to happen like the uh, Brand Wharf over there. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll continue nonetheless. So there we go. Again, though, the, the build construction of the orbits are very, very good for this one. Um, let's go ahead and uh, look at the... So, oh, yeah, that one's really got up now. <laughs> hey, what about the former blue planets? I don't think those three are looking too great now. There's the desert one. That one there. 500 there. Oh, dear. Hunt out was the last of the blue objects. So they're all just turning into Venus worlds now, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Right, let's continue. Uh, as fast as we can go, which is only three years of simulated time. So that round walk's going to take quite a bit of time to come back. Or is it? It is increasing. Where's that trail? There it is. As it slowly approaches back into the uh, system again, we will see what it does. Again, uh, we'll, uh, as it approaches, we'll throw in a save. We'll try and watch it in slow motion. It is picking up speed, though. Look, it is coming in. It's just picking up speed. There you go. We'll slow down time as it approaches. There you go. Actually, we'll also throw it a save before everything goes absolutely turmoil. So there you go. Looking good. Get it playing. Right, let's watch as this guy slings by. So here it is. It's coming in again. So, second attack. Looks like it's on full attack this time now. It has a bit of time to adapt to the simulations. So here it is. Right. Is it going to cause any chaos? It's got three masses of the dooms here. You'd think it's going to have some kind of effect. So there it is. We'll look at it from the Brown Dwarf's perspective. It's a pretty big, big little object. It's nine Jupiters in size. Now, is it on a crash course or is it going to sling by? Keep the orbits on here. Let's see if it does anything. So there it is there. Dangerously large object flying in. Is it going to have... A, is it going to go by it? Let's see. So there it is. Approaching on a very, very... It looks like it is on a collision course because we did make the star larger. So this could be interesting. Did it upset any orbits? I don't know if it did. But we're going to see as this actually goes straight into the star here. And see, uh, that's a lot of mass. It could really interrupt the star's uh, evolution. Maybe even a smash into the star would upset the orbits. And, uh, gravity. There you go. So he's going to collide with the star. The star's going to increase in temperature drastically. And that may push the star's orbit. So will that upset the orbits? Let's see. So star's engulfed it. Now let's... Uh, Increase the time. Now, did that upset end the orbits? Oh, it did. Yeah. Ooh. Look at that. The orbits are all little. Ooh, it did a bit. Okay. Look at that. They're bouncing around a bit more now because the star got a little. Star got punched in the face, basically, by that thing. So, 
Yeah, it did push the star, and therefore the orbits did look like they got a little interrupted there. So look at that. Oh, that's a bit of a... The inner solar system has gone into a bit of a mix-up there. I think it's a little more, uh, a little more rapid. So there you go. So the brown dwarf, can, the natural brown dwarf, can completely consume by the star. We've had a sun eject, so something that did cause some effects, because we've had an object ejected there. So that brown dwarf's presence did cause some damage. As we can see, we have lost some more objects. So there you go. Oh, God, the way you have to delete. Look at that. Why? See, why can't I click it? That one's coming back. Actually, I won't delete that one. So there you go. So that's not a happy star. Look at the closest planet now. That one's orbit is very, very dangerously close now with that inclined orbit there. So it's getting... In the next evolution phase, that orbit is going to be consumed. Yeah, it's getting ridiculously close, isn't it? Right, there we go. And I think we're going to do just that. We're going to double it up again. So star is getting more rapid now. Luminosity, we're going to double it up to over 100 now. A lot of doubles. There you go. So now we're going to see the first of the planets is going to be consumed. So here it is. It's going to sling straight into the star. The star's getting too big. Its orbit doesn't work anymore. It is gone. So now we should see some really insane temperatures rock up in the inner solar system now. So there we go. Let's go throw another save in there. Looking good. Okay. Watch those orbits. See that? That? Yeah, those orbits. That, oh, yeah, there's definitely some turmoil. Even the gas giant's orbits. Look at them wobbling around now. The uh, yellow one there. That one's orbit's a little. Uh... God, that really did cause some chaos. That brown dwarf really messed things up. <laughs> Look at them now. This is all perfectly stable at one point. All the planet orbits. The moons have been just shredded. All those orbits. Around. Look at all the outer objects all flinging around out here. That's crazy stuff. Right, there you go. That inner system has had a real butchering. <laughs> So there we go. Look at that state of that. That's not uh, not too great, is it? So we've seen some real, real stuff getting sniffed out. What is that? What is this? What's that doing? There? We've lost a whole gas giant. Look at that. That's gone. Deleted that. And the moons as well. So a gas giant and a set of moons were slung out. There we go. Let's delete all those as well. Oh, wow. We. Okay. What's that object that's that long trail there? Oh, my gosh. What happened to this one? That's gone as well. Right. There you go. So there we go. The inner system is in absolute turmoil now. It is carnage. Temperature-wise, things are getting pretty insane. We're going to the 3,000 mark now. 1,000 mark for the uh, flight worlds. Formerly nice and beautiful at the beginning of this, but now being completely ruined. There we go. Further out, first of the gas giants here. Juvin, the dominant, that's 117 now. Second gas giant out. That one's in the positive temperatures. Third one, not in the, not in the positive just yet. Okay, there you go. But either way, it's not looking good, is it? But... We are going to finish off today's episode there. We're going to leave what happens to the next episode. So, there you go. All the objects flying across the star there. So, yeah, what do you guys think of that one? I've heard about that brown dwarf really uh, spice things up, didn't it? With the interstellar traveller there. So, yeah, pretty good stuff. But, yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comments of this. And, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, see if we can go for 100 likes. And, yeah, let me know what do you think should happen in the next episode. Should we have any more random encounters? Or should we let the system play out as is? Let me know what you think in the comments. But with that all said and done, like I said, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, help us in the journey to 50,000 subscribers. You can still see some more bits changed in the background there. And yeah, everybody, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.